I'm going to talk to you about Doppler effect. I love this uh, little drawing here, this little sticker. If the sticker is blue, you're driving too fast. Why is that? Because if it's uh, blue shifted, right, because I mean, it took this thing uh, red. And if it looks like it's blue, that means it's blue shifted. That means you're driving uh, so fast that you're actually approaching them. It's a lame joke, but there you go. So we're going to talk about Doppler effect and there's two different versions. You can have it when you have a moving source or a moving observer. I'll just show you one of the examples, but you'll see the other one. It works just the same way. So you have to imagine this. You have a source of sound and that one is moving. Okay, so just imagine that's happening here. So I'm just on the sound source and I'm just moving along like this so from left to right. What happens is as I'm moving, I'm emitting a sound. Let's just say it goes like boom. It goes like out in a circle like this, like right from where you left it. And then, of course, you move a little bit and you send out another sound, so to speak, and then another sound. So that's what I'm actually trying to show here on this drawing. Can you see that? Uh, I mean, just to show it. So let's just say I'm a, I was a source and I was actually right here, for example. I would emit a sound here and that sound, of course, would go out, wouldn't it? Like this thing would sort of radiate outwards. But the thing is, then I move along and I send out another one. But when I send out this one here, this other one here already got big and it moved. So this is this is the effect right here. You have to imagine it's almost like you've got circles and you're moving them. So that's why the circles get sort of squished on the front and sort of more space behind it. That's because this source is going to the right here. We're going to assume that this source is going this way right here. You can see that by the squishness of these waves here that have been sent out. It's a little bit hard to draw this because this is a dynamic situation that's actually happening and moving, whereas here I'm trying to just draw like a snapshot of what's going on. But basically what happens is as you emit these, you know, these, these pulses of sound, for example, whatever these are, they're going, if you were not moving, they would just go out radially outwards. You'd see these nice, and imagine like, let's say I sat on another one, there'd be another one, and then there'd be another one. Like there'd be nice even spaces. The problem is they're not doing this. I'm not staying still, I'm moving. So you can see as I'm moving, I'm sort of squishing them as I send out another one and another one. So just, this is what's going on here. I just wanted to maybe try to show this just so it makes it maybe a little bit more sense here. Um, so what I'm gonna do then is attempt, well, let's just see here. Can I grab these and delete them? Yeah. We'll see if I can just delete a few of them later here. There we go. So with my moving source, and here's what's happening, I'm, I'm sending out this sound. Now remember though, uh, I mean, if you look here, these, do you see these little differences right here? These are actually the difference in the wave fronts. So you could actually define this distance right here. You could say that's lambda. So is this. Now compare that lambda to this one over here. Look, this lambda here, I mean, I didn't draw it perfectly. These should be even spacing here. But do you notice this lambda over here is smaller than that one? So here's a little trick for you. When you have lambda is smaller, that means you have a larger f. That's because lambda, the wavelength, and the frequency work in opposite directions. If you forgot that, uh, you can use the wave equation, v equals f lambda. You know, that's the speed of the wave, and this is the frequency and the wavelength. So if you want to do this, can you see if v right here was going to be the same? If lambda gets smaller, then f has to get bigger. So this equation is sort of helpful in order to sort of figure out what happens here. So if lambda goes down, the frequency has to go up. They, where they work in opposite directions in that sense. So what this then means, think about this. If you're observing this sound here, this is a sound coming towards you. Well, the wavelength of the sound is smaller. Doesn't that mean then the frequency is larger if it's coming towards you? So that means here, as it comes towards you, you're going to hear a higher frequency as it comes towards you. Um, and of course, as it passes by you, can you imagine now this whole thing right here being sort of over here now? Can you imagine it being to the right? Do you notice that then you'd have larger wavelengths? So if you had larger wavelengths, that means you'd have smaller frequency. And the frequency really kind of tells you what we call the pitch of a sound. Uh, so, you know, if something has a higher frequency, it's like, you know, like you might have seen this um, with car racing. As a car passes uh, by the camera, for example, you know, if you're, if you're a stationary observer and there's a car coming past you, it kind of goes. Why does it do that? Because as it's coming towards you, the frequency is higher. That's why it's like, I know I sound like an idiot when I do it, but that's fine. As it goes, and as it passes in front of you, of course, then it's going away from you. So larger wavelength, lower frequency. That's why the sound seems to go down in pitch. It goes, keep in mind, that's sort of how it works. I know I'm sounding like a moron when I do it, but there you go. 
So this right here is the Doppler uh, effect equation. This is the main one right here that you need. And we're going to talk about this because you're going to have observed frequencies and um, emitted frequencies. So this is why it's really important to then break down this equation here. So F prime is going to be the observed frequency. That's what you, the observer, actually detect. It's going to be equal to F, which is the emitted frequency. That's what it's actually putting out. You know, if it's like honking its horn, for example, or something. By the way, frequencies, those are measured in hertz, aren't they? Or in one over seconds. Then you have V. This V and this V are the same V. That's the speed of sound, which is in meters per second. So if it's an air, it should be like, I don't know, 330-ish meters per second. And then US here, this is the speed of the source. That's how fast the source is actually moving. This is also in meters per second. So it tells you basically the faster your source moves, you know, the more this shift should happen. Now, when do you use the plus or the minus? There's some ways. I mean, you could you could uh, you could actually try to calculate it. Um, you could learn the different ways. But what I like to do is just think about very carefully. If this thing is coming towards you, you know the frequency should be higher. You know, like if it's coming towards you, frequency should be higher. So, which value of US plus or minus would make the frequency observed be higher? You know, so which one would make that F prime to be larger? So, would a smaller value on the bottom? See, if I if I did a smaller value on the bottom, that would make this value bigger. So that's how I sort of think about it. Otherwise, you can always just try to do both calculations and whichever one gives you the larger frequency, you know, if, if it was coming towards you, then you do that. Because if it's going away from you, it'll be the opposite sign. I guess then the frequency should be lower. I just think about cars coming towards me and that tells me if it should go up or down. So that's why I said coming towards you is higher pitch or frequency, going away is lower pitch or frequency. So let's uh, look at this. We have another helpful equation. This I'm not going to say much about because it's on your data booklet, but it just tells you um, a change in frequency over the emitted frequency is equal to change in wavelength over wavelength, which is related to V over C. This is helpful for astronomy, for example. If uh, we see, we observe something's wavelength being different, then can you see that we can actually infer its speed as a fraction of C? You see this one here? Do you see uh, this? See, remember the speed of light. So we can actually say then that, um, you know, if we see the wavelengths of what we're seeing in a star, let's say we see some, uh, some emission lines or some absorption lines or something uh, that we're looking out into space, and we see something. And we see those lines, they're shifted a little bit, either blue or red. Right? This is the whole idea about uh, red or blue shift. We say things are shifted because if they're shifted to larger wavelengths, uh, that means they get more red, and red shifted means you know things are uh, going away from you, and blue shifted means they're coming towards you. And it turns out um, almost all the objects we look at in space they're pretty much all uh, red shifted. In other words, everything is going away from us. So this shift, this amount that's been shifted by by wavelength, that's this delta lambda. So from there, you can see you can sort of figure out your speed as a function of c, as a fraction of c. I mean. So here's an example. So here you're driving your car at a constant speed and you honk your horn, which has a frequency F0. Okay, so we're going to assume that we have some sort of frequency F0 here. Um, now at time t equals one second, what are you going to do here? You're going to pass a friend who's standing outside. So imagine then, so you're driving your car right here like this. Oh boy, that is a bad car. Uh, this is me in my car. I'm not an artist, you can tell. Uh, this is me driving towards my friend here. He's sad because he thinks I'm going to crash into him, maybe. Because clearly I'm not a very good driver if I'm not even in the car. I'm sort of outside it. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, so this is me honking my horn, right? So my horn sound is coming towards him. So what's happening then? Remember, um, draw a graph of F versus T for the variation of the sound wave. So what's going to happen is this. I'm going to be... Um, well, let's let's assume we have some sort of constant value here. This is what he, or this is what my actual sound is, which is F0, let's just say. And at this point, this is the important thing. I pass my friend. Remember what happens as I'm coming towards, like moving a source, as I'm coming towards higher pitch or frequency. Remember, that's because the wavelength got squished. And remember, if wavelength goes down, frequency goes up. That's why I think of it as I just think of it, the wavelength gets squished in the front. So squished wavelengths means larger frequency. Therefore, if this is the center, this is like what I'm really honking at, that's the frequency if you were stopped, what will my friend hear? Well, before I pass him, 
So before t equals one second, it's going to be some higher frequency. And then as I pass, I mean, it's not sudden. It's going to, you know, it's, it's going to be a transition like this. And then it's going to go sort of something lower like this. So I'm going to go from a higher frequency to a lower frequency than the emitted one. I hope that's easy. That's actually pretty straightforward, isn't it? I mean, you can do other calculations, but I mean, this is this gives you a good understanding of Doppler shift. So I hope that helps.